<laughs> Matt Lambert, here we go again, man. Hey, right now, back to the same place. This is where the fun starts happening, man. <laughs> yeah, you bring Let's, your hacksaw? Yeah, absolutely, man. <laughs> yeah. Let's start dissecting. Let me fire up the acetylene torch. Let's start cutting this thing in half. Let's get into it. Hey, man, before we actually start uh, putting on our welding helmets and stuff, Let's uh, let's talk about a little bit about the modules. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, yep. let's, let's just do a whole segment on it. All right, let's do a whole segment on nothing but modules. <laughs> Look here at the tech board. I got a, I got our uh, uh, obligatory marketing slide here that kind of shows where we've went with uh, some of these modules here. The stuff that we were pre pre ISR, pre -ISR mm -hmm. how we ported that over to the ISR, and now the ISR stuff. What we're doing to port that to the ISR G2. Can yeah. you explain what we're doing here? And that's really a consistent theme that we've had throughout the ISR is that you know we 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 want to evolve the technology and come out with the things that that customers are asking for, but we don't want to just abandon customers that have, that have already been with us for a long time and been loyal to us. Um, so before the ISR in, in early 2004, we had uh, we had the 2600, the 3600, the 3700. Mm. Um, they supported these these WIC cards, network modules, and internal AIM cards. When we came out with the ISR in, in 2004, we basically supported all of those same module types, but at the same time, we enhanced them with uh, with faster HWICs and faster network module enhanced or NMEs, oh, and, yeah. and we kept supporting the uh, the A modules and introduced the the PVDM twos for for DSP. We still supported all of the existing modules, but we uh, we came up with uh, with new and faster uh, module types in the same slots. Um, ISRG2, we're doing exactly the same thing. Uh, it's the exact same philosophy. We're, we're going to continue supporting WIX and HWIX uh, in the same module type, uh, but we're coming out with a new, faster, enhanced HWIC type. I um, see. It's physically yeah. identical. It looks just like the uh, the, the standard HWIX um, in a new type. It just uh, takes advantage of the newer silicon we have now. Takes advantage of the new with. things in the industry um, and, and lets us do a lot more things uh, like supporting that multi-gigabit fabric we've been talking about. Okay. Um, in, in terms of uh, larger modules, we've got the, the new services module here. Um, it's, it's an evolution, basically, of the, uh, of the network module we have uh, with the ISRs, oh, cool. um, and we're going to continue to support the NMs um, in the SM slot with just a, uh, a small carrier card, which we can, we can dig in with uh, in a minute here. Uh, the only types we don't support are the, uh, are the double-wide and the extra-wide uh, network modules. Sure. Just because of physical constraints. But you know, we've, got, we've got modules that replace, uh, that are evolutions of all of the NMEs that we, that we had today, or all of the NME Xs okay. uh, that we have today, so that's not a problem. Uh, internal to the system, we're, we're, we're coming up with this new module type called the Internal Services Module, an ISM. Uh, that, that is basically an evolution of the AIM module. That's the, that's the only module type we don't support. Um, and that's simply because going from an, an AIM to an ISM, we were able to use a lot more real estate um, in, the, uh, in the internal module now, and uh, the connector is dramatically faster um, than we could in the, in the AIM. And the, the technology has just improved so much um, that you can get a lot more onto, uh, onto an ISM than you could on an AIM. Um, and of course, you know, we're not going to leave out our PVDMs. We've got a, a yeah. new PVDM3 that, that increases our voice density uh, by four times uh, compared with the ISRs. Yowza. But, you know, hey, if you've still got PVDM2s you want to keep using, we've got an adapter module that's going to make them work perfectly So if you've got these fine. old deuce modules, these will all still kind of port over and over. Yep, big deal. Uh, you've got little small little carrier cards that adapt them physically to make them fit. Hey, man, this is cool. So we can give this a big uh, C for cool here. Uh, but let's take this. Let's, let's, let's forget this stuff. Let's dig into the box. All right, man. Show me some stuff here, man. All right, so you got a, you've got a 3945 here. It's sort of the high end of the portfolio. It's the flagship platform. Yeah. Um, one of the cool things about the 3900s, the 3925 and 45, is that you've got a, uh, an upgradable uh, motherboard here called a services processing engine. Um, upgradable motherboard. So you're talking about an in-place... Like, like a place. supervisor card upgrade. It's like a supervisor card upgrade. Ba basically, you can you can just take it out. As we'll we'll come up with uh, uh, as technology improves and advances, we'll have uh, we'll have additional modules and cards that uh, that you can come out with, and 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 it'll increase the performance of the system as a whole. Flip this book around here. Let yeah, me man. see this thing. So I can see, see it. what you got. Let's see here. So so explain to me what we're looking at here. Okay, so you you've got your your basically uh, your your services performance engine here. You've got your four uh, enhanced HWIC slots here around the front. Uh -huh. um, they're going to take any of your existing HWICs or WICs and and also the new uh, EHWIC form factor here. Mm -hmm. um, here you've got your your four slots for uh, PVDM three modules uh, or PVDM two modules if you still have those around for you today. Yeah, that's what surprised me. I noticed even on the smaller end route on the on the, the 2911, it also had four slots on it. Yeah, well, you've, you've got the same number of, of PVDM slots on on the ISRG2 as you do on on the ISR. Uh -huh. um, but the the new PVDM threes are gonna are gonna go up to four times the density in terms of DSP resources Which is what you um, said that we have today. Here, so yep, I just exactly. Repeat what you said. Yep, yep. That's how smart as you. Well, yeah, you know, we're trying. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, you're basically your 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 memory over here, your DRAM. You've got uh, two banks of memory. Yep. Um, Nothing surprising there, uh, and then this uh, this big area here. That's basically where your ISM would would sit if you had. Okay, one that's here. a daughter card that snaps on top of this board. Yep, it's a daughter card that, that sits on top of the board here. It doesn't consume any any front panel real estate, so you're not eating up ports or. Uh, any any interfaces to the system. Uh, it, it's also something that, that people can't physically see and can't physically walk away with. 
hmm. um, if, you, if you've got something like that in a branch. From a, de from a electrical design perspective, I'm really surprised at the limited number of capacitors that we have on here. We mm -hmm. really, uh, really made some real uh, advances in uh, some of the stuff we're doing in chip design, huh? Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a real tight, uh, tight design here. Um, a really low capacitance, which well, means really, really low surge. Um, it, it was really well designed from an electrical standpoint, I think. Yeah, you're not kidding. That's really... Yeah. Uh, what, what, what else we got? That's a cool card. We'll right. Leave that bugger out here. All right, Take so the next, else out. next thing you've got here in the system is one of the new uh, EtherSwitch service modules. This is actually um, one of the double wide modules. So this is a, a 48 port module here. Uh -huh. um, this is essentially a, a catalyst um, closet switch on a blade here. So this is a, a catalyst 3560E um, on a blade. It uses the same iOS software. It uses the same CLI and supports all the same features. Um, really? That you get on a, on a Catalyst 3560. This is just a condensed version of it's, the 3560. It's is just that right? a condensed version. Yeah, yeah. We don't we don't hide that from anyone. That's uh, that's basically. Hang on, angle this booger back up here again so see I can see it a little bit better. Here. Son of a gun! It sure is, man. You can see the Cisco chip there yep. and everything. Hey, this is something kind of cool. I didn't notice this, but what's the deal with this pullout tag? So that's that's one of the new concepts we've got across the ISRG2. So this, this is what we call the uh, the label tray. Uh -huh. um, you, you get a lot of compliance labels, serial numbers, uh, universal device identifiers, um, all types of things that, that you have to have labels for on the front of all of your different components. Um, we just basically ran out of real estate with a lot of things that get really cluttered if we were looking for places to stick all of these little labels. Yeah, that's um, a problem with consolidating. So on all the new modules, you can see on the SPE there, we've got one. Um, we've got little label trays that pull out and give you all of your all of your important information there. Very groovy, man. That's, yeah. that's, uh, that's really cool. What else? Uh, what other module? You know, I noticed that we also had, uh, you had this optical card. I mean, you sent me out this router, and I'm grateful mm -hmm. for it. It's one I've taken yeah, yeah. apart. But uh, I, I was really surprised with this optical card, too. I'm like, really, man? I'm uh, Number one, that, that people are still asking for ATM. But Yeah, so so this is just a classic ATM um, OC3 uh, network module. Um, it's, up here. it's one that we've had on the ISRs for a while now. Uh -huh. um, what you can see here, though, is that this is, you know, just your, your basic network module. Um, and we've got a, uh, a little adapter card here. Uh huh. That uh, adapts it to the to the new SM slot. That's for so. Uh, is this for older cards in this adapter tray? Yep, it's for no any, any of your existing network modules that that don't physically fit into the uh, to the SM slot. So that's you investment that protection right there. The, a cool thing to look at this electrically speaking is you look at the to to, to, to show the advancements you make in silicone. Look at the silicone up here mm -hmm. on this compared to let's say the the the, the silica on this board mm -hmm. in that same amount of real estate. Look at that, man. I mean, that's the advances that you pretty much put. I mean, we have to know what logical piece we're looking at, probably about right here. And you can see the advances that we've made and just clean that up. That's mm -hmm. really uh, that's really something, man. That's truly Moore's law and work there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a nice, little, uh, nice little benefit to customers to let them uh, keep using all of their existing modules. Well, well let's leave the SRE alone because yeah. we're going we're gonna to talk about that a little bit later. But uh, you also got another module here sitting on the table. What's the deal with that booger? Well, this is, this is similar to, to your OC3 network module that you've been playing around with. Yeah. Um, this is just one of our existing uh, uh, EtherSwitch network modules uh -huh. uh, in, the, in the NME form factor. So okay. this is this is one. It's one of our more popular modules that, that customers everywhere have in their ISRs, um, and it, it's basically just the, the same concept. Uh, it's basically just showing that you know, hey, we've got another carrier card here, another SM to uh, to NM adapter uh -huh. uh, that that basically allows you to use uh, this existing network module uh, straight over into your uh, into your brand new ISR G2. So if, if if I'm looking at this thing and I'm saying that okay, I got this this module that uh, that I want to move down to another branch. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I'm going to put a newer device in, but I got this module sitting on the shelf. Is it like a ready server spare or something? Then I'm not negated. I can actually move this down to the branch, put this adapter. Do you Absolutely. buy this separate? Uh, you can typically buy that separately, or you can you can continue to order uh, network modules as part of an ISR G2, and they'll ship from Cisco with with, uh, the, with, really? the, with the adapter card in it. <laughs> Very cool, man. Yeah. This is uh this is this is pretty darn cool. You know what? What's impressive is uh, how field serviceable uh, mm -hmm. th this whole unit is. I mean, with the mere fact that we can replace motherboards and port cards over. You know, porting the cards over shouldn't be too much of a surprise since this is the third generation product we've been doing mm -hmm. that in. Uh, but the but the but the fact that we're looking at actually uh, you know, going to more of a supervisor card type model. That's pretty darn impressive. Yeah, and I mean, this is just one side of the system. We tried to make these routers as serviceable as possible for, for branches where you don't typically have a, a, a you know, a field technician in place. Um, so we've got things like field serviceable fan trays and power supplies. Um, we've got uh, online insertion and removal for, uh, for multiple modules. Uh, you can even remove and replace uh, the fans and the power supplies while the system's running. What? So we, yeah, we tried to make it as serviceable the as possible. The fans you can remove when it's running? Absolutely. You've got to be kidding. Have you tried that? I have tried that. I have gotten it to work. Really? It's it. That's the way it works, man. You know, man, this is. It's amazing to me to see how carrier class 
were approaching. And I'm not mean that being a market knob or anything. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to say that it, the, the carrier class features that we used to pay a lot of cash for or wish we could do uh, just in, uh, at the, on the campus side that mm -hmm. we're now doing at the branch side. I mean, well, field serviceable, hot swap fans. Yeah, like I said, I mean, we, we've, we've definitely been one of, the, one of the leaders in the industry for the last five years with the, uh, with the ISR, and, and that's given us a lot of really good feedback from customers. We just tried to incorporate all of that um, into, the, into the new line of ISR G2 as much as we could. Dude, yeah. I gotta cut you off, man. This is this is just too impressive. Right. I'm just gonna like I'm, I'm gonna explode from all the information here, man. man. You better settle down, man. Take a seat. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Appreciate you, buddy. Sure, anytime.